G'day everyone, Nick here from Super Cheap CPAP and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different from what I normally do in talking about CPAP and CPAP masks and take you back to where it all started. Back to the sleep study that you might have done. So for those of you who have done a sleep study, you might recall being um, wired up to the Scheisenhauser with uh, things up your nose, things on your fingers, things in your hair. It's not, a, it's not a great night, we know it, but it has to be done so that we can actually find out what's going on in your sleep. Now at the other end of those wires, um, all those signals feed through to a computer and this is what it looks like on the screen. I'm going to sort of show you things we look for when we're determining whether or not someone has sleep apnea. In particular, the things we look for is how someone's breathing. Obviously sleep apnea, for those of you who don't know, is when your airway collapses, your upper airway collapses of a night time and it causes a restriction which causes your blood oxygen levels to drop and your sleep to become very fragmented and it can also cause a lot of other health problems. I'm not here to give you a lecture on that today. So what I'm actually looking at here, I know it looks like a whole bunch of lines, but what I'm actually looking at here is your SpO2 which is your blood oxygen level up the top here. Now we want that to be above 90. Remember, you're sleeping. You know, you, you should just be breathing normal, relaxed. The blood oxygen levels should be nice and high. If they're nice and high, this is going to allow the body to just relax and recover. Below that, we have the airflow, and that's actually the breathing. So that's actually the flow of air coming in and out as you inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale as you do your breathing. Now, that should be nice and stable. If you think about it, you're just lying there, you're not doing anything, it should just be a nice, stable breathing. As you can see in this scenario, you can see there's long periods here, this one's 41 seconds, where there's no flow coming through. It should look like this right through. See how it's in, out, in, out, in, out. That should continue right along. This is a two minute subsection across here, so there should just be these nice, Inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, like a sine wave. And then you can see at this point in time where that patient breathes for three or four breaths, not long, there's some snoring with the green. You can see the green there, that's a bit of snore happening. There's also a kick of the legs. We see this a lot. All right, so it's very hard to sleep next to someone with sleep apnea because they're constantly jerking and moving and stuff because when they actually wake up out of sleep to breathe, their whole body sort of dances with them. Okay, they have a kick of the legs or a jerk. It's a bit of a jerk sensation. But you can actually see a bit of a pattern here. No breath and then some breathing and then no breathing and then a bit of breathing, no breathing, a bit of breathing. And we can actually mark all these sort of parts where there's no breathing. And then the actual computer can actually analyze what we've marked and that's how we generate a sleep study, a sleep study report. So that's how you get your actual report. So this is a raw data you're looking at, you're getting a peer into the raw data. Now all these parts here where there's no breathing puts a tremendous stress on the body and it has a, has a um, way of making the sleep very fragmented, very light, so that people with sleep apnea wake up and they feel like they haven't slept because the sleep quality is so poor. Their body is under a lot of stress when they're sleeping. They have low blood oxygen levels. And this, over days, months, years, starts to cause a lot of health issues to arise. People have a lot of heart problems. They tend to put on weight. They tend to be depressed, sexually dysfunctional. Um, lots of different issues they have. Um, they tend to be moody. Problems with um, you know forgetfulness, concentrating. All these things happen because sleep is very important and if you're not sleeping properly uh, it just it makes sense that things don't go to plan. So this sort of thing is quite severe. You can see the blood oxygen levels dropping down to 70. That's quite alarming. Right? But when we, when we fix this issue, when we treat it and we get nice stable oxygen levels, nice stable breathing, nice good sleep cycle, you'll feel a whole lot better. Right, you'll feel like you should feel, you'll wake up and feel that you have energy, you'll be able to get through the day without wanting to sit down and fall asleep, but in the long run you'll also be a whole lot better off um, in terms of your health. 
because this sort of thing over a long period of time is just a recipe for disaster and that's why there is such a high correlation between uh, sleep apnea and heart attacks and strokes and all these other health conditions. Alright, so I hope you've got something out of this little uh, video. It's not a long one, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into what we see in the data so you know that we're not just making things up when we talk to you about how many times an hour you stop breathing. Okay, so thanks for watching this little video. I hope you've got something out of it. Please like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also if you're wanting to, um, you know, get a uh, get some therapy for this, head over to our website, Super Cheap CPAP. We've got a lot of instructional videos now that we're doing on CPAP therapy and how it all works. Thanks again, and goodbye.